Traveling R&D Podcast, episode 26. This is, this is Alex Caravan, co-host, wow. co-swag manager of Baseball Analytics. Drinking I actually didn't record perfectly when, when you started that. So Yeah, bro. Also cut me off perfectly as per usual. Uh, drinking it, drink, drinking it at 0.5% kombucha in honor of our guest here. But let's let's keep the intros rolling. Lindley. Hi, uh, Lindley. Uh, driveline R&D intern, not intern, engineer. Um, what? Dude. <laughs> Whoa. Dude, you just demoted yourself to dude. an intern on the Lindley podcast. Lindley gets around Rachel and automatically no way, is like, dude. I'm an intern. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. That's true. That's uh, wild. That's yeah. the wildest <laughs> intro I've ever what had. A Freudian slip. Holy shit. I know. I was just. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Rachel, whatever. are you our new director? <laughs> Drinking I think a, I'm the only intern that was on this call. I think I'm the only driveline intern on this call. Yeah, Lindley wishes it wasn't the case. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, keep going. Uh, go, go back to 2017. Uh, drinking a Coors Light. First uh, Coors I've had in a while. Coors Light at, uh, oh, I guess it's it's technically the afternoon. Technically. Hey, buddy, keeping it light. Uh, I'm Anthony Brady, driveline baseball, uh, biomechanist. Um, primary host of the Driveline R and D Research and Drink podcast, mm-hmm. drinking a generic, uh, what donut shop coffee with three shots of tequila. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's a joke, yeah. by the way, Rachel. He's, he's not actually the primary host. He, he's been uh, yep. running the joke. I know. The what but I know. I've been here in this whole battle, and I, I, uh, I don't think, I don't think Brady's the real host. So, oh, well, let's go. So you have been watching the episodes. What? Let's go. Oh yeah, oh, oh, he hasn't been watching the episodes. I'm a big fan. <laughs> That's take. Let's go. Do you want yes. uh, to introduce yourself, Rachel, or do you want us to to put together an introduction for you? Yo, take it easy, intern. She's got it. I'll yeah, I'll take this. Um, well, my name is Rachel Balkovec, and. Uh, I'm currently a minor league hitting coach for the New York Yankees, but I was a intern DJ and gaze tracker at driveline baseball um, up until February of this year, 2020. So I was, I was bumping the beats in the bomb and cags lab to shit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's what happened. I left driveline. Everything went downhill, you know what I'm saying? Or you could say I showed up to the Yankees and everything went downhill. So, (laughs) um, that's a good outlook. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so yeah, I was I was bumping the beats in the bomb mechanics lab, and I was harassing Lindley, and we were partners in crime and gaze tracking at Driveline, and and uh, now here I am in COVID, not being a minor league hitting coach, but doing it uh, remotely. So yeah, that's was that the introduction you wanted? It was really former good. former uh, strength conditioning coach for the Cardinals and Astros, mm-hmm. uh, multiple grad school uh programs um Speaking your own what baby else at the what else do we got slugfest uh yes in florida yes incredible speech she ate a slice of pizza also at uh <laughs> slugfest which is just unbelievable you can't say that on the podcast you're gonna uh, need to edit that out unbelievable fun fact, fun fact about uh rachel all of her you know 5 a.m 6 a.m instagram story posts are actually <laughs> goes to bed <laughs> Right after them. <laughs> One of those fake influencer motivators. <laughs> All ploy. You guys well, know too much about me. Th- th- that was my first question. Uh, during COVID, h- how has your lifting been going? Have you been able to work out at CrossFit gyms or what have you been doing? Garage workouts? Well, I uh, the first part of COVID, I asked the CrossFit gym that I work out at t- in Tampa. Um, they lent me some, a barbell and plates. And I actually took a two month road trip through Utah and Colorado in the middle of nowhere. And I had a barbell and some plates and some dumbbells and some rings. So the gym was nice enough to like lend me that equipment. And so I would travel around with it in my car, which was super clutch. So I didn't need a gym. And also I hiked a ton in Utah and Colorado at night. And then, uh, yeah. And then now they're like, gyms are kind of open. So I'm still, you know, I'm still doing that, but I go by myself in the morning. You know, because I go really early, Brady, just <laughs> so everyone's clear. Just I go take by the myself. And then go back home, go back to bed. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. Get it. Yep. Exactly. I mean, also, Loki, I don't know if uh, this even crossed your mind, but going early enough to not like intimidate the all the other gym members that like would get outlifted by you. 
No, that's actually because that, that's I definitely use. that's definitely been an issue at driveline. People would uh, <laughs> just be, be super self conscious about lifting in front of Rachel. I noticed it when I used to work out with <laughs> Lindley. <laughs> Yeah, I no, self, I actually I lived at a CrossFit gym. I got self conscious walking around. <laughs> it's like gate pattern, bro. I'm just ready for my yeah. gate pattern to get roasted. <laughs> I was also the lead body shamer at, at Driveline. Oh, um, 100%. Was... 100%. <laughs> uh, just the other day. Oh, never mind. I couldn't say that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I <laughs> actually it, lift. I ch- yeah, I choose to lift at a CrossFit gym. So I don't have to lift in front of the baseball coaches. You're saying, you're saying, you're saying cut. Don't want to be too intimidated. Right? Not for yours. That's for their yeah. sake. Yes. They don't feel like. <laughs> sure. Let's go. Totally understand. Totally understand. Yeah. Caravan has yeah. that same exact issue. That's why he hasn't gone to the new facility. Yeah, I haven't even been. <laughs> I mean, like, been. he doesn't want to like mess up the dynamic of like being, you know, the. Go swag manager, baseball analytics, and then also being the most jacked, strongest yeah. person at the gym and just like making everyone feel inferior. People just don't take me seriously. They think like, yeah. how's this dude so, so good at lifting and also supposed to be like the uh, the data nerd? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. dude, you only need to work out like one, one hour a day. It's not that hard. But, <laughs> Here, you know. man, I feel you. I feel I feel you. That's a you're you're a you're a um, you're a chameleon, you know? Yeah. You're not a people, unicorn. People. Not a unicorn. <laughs> Um, uh, well, I mean, well, he I wasn't. Think, he I wasn't think Caravan's a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, I think you're. I think you guys are all unicorns. I, I, I just wasn't there. I just wasn't there to throw on a unicorn uh, outfit. If Where, we're all unicorns, you, then what are you is talking anybody? about? What are you talking about, Caravan? It, it's, it'll be in our Patreon. It'll be in our Patreon episode. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what kind of like? What's like the biggest takeaway from all your various stops, like throughout your storied, storied, groundbreaking? Uh, career, you know, got to drop the opening Wikipedia line. First woman to be hired full time. Uh, West Seattle club. woman. B team. Yeah. West Seattle um, woman. You just what, 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 what's got, what's got that been? entire line, but go. Yeah, it got Wikipedia up on my West right Seattle tab. Woman? <laughs> didn't want, didn't want, <laughs> didn't want to sausage it. Uh, <laughs> but but I'm saying like what's what's kind of been like if if you can go through your your big background stops: Cardinals, Astros, the Netherlands, Driveline. What's been kind of like one key thing or what's been one of your biggest lessons learned that you've taken away from each stop and helped shape like who you are now? Uh, I mean, really, like you want me to go through each stop quickly? Yeah, this, this, better be, this better be at least a three minute answer so we can wow. clip it out and, uh, and drop it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Like just I would attribute some of this to like how the game has changed and how the industry has changed. But I was with the Cardinals. My first year was 2012, and then I was also there 14 and 15. And to give you an idea of like where tech was at, Zep came by um, when 2014, I think, 15 maybe. Zep came by and gave a presentation, and I was in the room. I was a minor league coordinator at the time, so I was in the room, hitting coordinator, farm directors in there, and I'm asking all these questions. You know, I just was like really curious, and I'm asking all these questions. I'm like, where where's this data from? Like, what's your data set? These it was mostly high school players at that time. And we walked out of the room and they were like, yeah, that's lame. You know, they were like, uh, <laughs> they yeah. just were like, no they were like, yeah, like whatever. Kind of just blew it off. And I remember thinking like, this is cute. You know, it's like a big deal. Yeah. Um, I've never then, heard this, by the way. And for people who don't know, Zep's kind of like the, the initial, the initial blast. blast yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, is it the like, isn't it the opposite? Cause they got, they were like, Zep's doesn't have a baseball sensor because they like, it was a patent infringement. Right. Oh yeah. Something oh. like that. Yeah, so well, I, I think okay. I, I think Blast may have been a, They used to be a semi uh, competitor of Blast, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then I just like I th- that was like the time though. It's crazy, like yeah. how fast. Like I was in the moment of change, I think, or in the the three to five years of massive change. And then you talk about going from an organization like that where yeah they were a little bit behind at the time, well, or they were normal. And then I went to the Astros, who were like way, way the fuck out in front, <laughs> and so. I learned, you know, the biggest, I would say like the most impressionable like moments in my baseball career were with, with the Astros by far where, I mean, they just were extremely forward thinking and in just about every way, you know, just like, um, I mean, pitching for sure. Stromy, Brent Strom was on the front of the end of that um, hitting Jeff Albert was on the front end of, of that. And he was like, definitely a huge um, adopting blast K-Vest, et cetera, like back, like way back not way back, but you know, way back yeah. in, 
in technology days term even just high speed and there was a lot of yeah like i mean edgertronic cameras like just all of it and um i just think that one of the biggest takeaways from there is like we there was a lot of like failures with technology in that organization and it was the big takeaway was like it was all worth it yeah Yeah. so i mean i'm gonna give you an example this is i mean someone out there might get mad but it was a while ago so like we 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 got um we had not not catapult like we had gps sensors for the players but it was a different company we were just like trying to save money so we kind of experimented with this other company who had a product out there um and the sensors were like they weren't lighting on fire but they were like getting so hot that the players couldn't keep them in the shirts what <laughs> so, it's crazy so like i mean but just failures like that we had yeah. to upend that entire thing and and get rid of it and i'm sure there was a lot of money loss and and things like that where we just tried a bunch of stuff and my last year it was i was in double a I was Latin American coordinator for two years, double A for the third year. And I was managing eight different technologies as a straight coach, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on, like just, just interacting with that and also seeing the value of it. And I mean, obviously I was hired. So hired uh, by the Yankees, by Dylan Lawson, who was with the Astros for three years while I was there. And so developing that relationship and also seeing him being on the front end of some stuff like he, you, you know, he's, I've talked about this on, on plenty of interviews before, but he was on the front end. I believe he was on the front end of eye tracking um, in baseball, not, you know, fatty obviously was around longer and man and, and Mueller and all these people. But as far as like actually implementing it into a program full scale, as far as like mo- rocket rocket to the moon, <laughs> yeah, like they, you know, well, as far as like, yeah, like there was yeah. a lot of, there's been research obviously for decades, but as far as somebody taking it applying and creating it. like a system yeah. and really mm-hmm. applying it, yeah. Um, I mean, I saw it like I would go in and sit in on his his talks with the Astros as a strength coach, go in and sit in the room while they were doing occlusion video. Yep. And yep. Um, when was I just when think, was that? What year is that? 2016. I thought was he still in college? Two thousand was he? He was at Mizzou, right? No, yeah. Sorry, sorry. He went to Mizzou, he was Astros. He went to Mizzou for a year and went back. Like, yeah, because so, I want to uh, say in twenty in twenty seventeen, I had a call with him at like out of nowhere, Ochart. Uh, set me up with a call of them and it was like crazy because the first time I ever talked to him and he just like asked me like an hour and a half of the most targeted like player development hitting yeah. a lot of it was about the EEG stuff that, that we did in 2017 yeah. but yeah. also yeah just like a ton of like pitch recognition and it, again it was just like quick co- phone call I thought it'd be a couple questions about like the blog and it was like an hour <laughs> and a half of like very very in-depth. yeah like that's my that's my boss he's he's so awesome so i think just like obviously i've talked a lot about like kind of my experience with the astros but they were just were so far ahead and and many things and probably just tried things that failed a lot you know and that's just that's like a a huge lesson obviously uh for me i mean going back to school in the netherlands was a huge risk but you know i mean you guys on this podcast know me like i don't believe in uh, the ability to succeed on a large scale if you're not taking big risks and um it was a huge risk but at the, t- at the same time it was calculated for me because i kind of knew what i was doing but i don't think anybody else knew what i was doing so everyone was like why would you ever do that and, I kind and, of and a- what were your degrees in again for, for the listeners? Uh, so my undergrads exercise science master's degree at lsu was in sports administration did a graduate assistantship there as a strength coach and then i went to the netherlands to do an msc in um human movement sciences with a specialty in biomechanics and yeah. And then there is a research degree. So obviously not the traditional training that Brady got in biomechanics, but more so like literally just the learned how to do research in biomechanics. And obviously, as you guys know, I still know so little about that. So that's cool for you. But anyway, um, yeah, so it set me up to do research I was supposed to come to driveline and do two research studies. I didn't finish either of those. So again, That's driveline, again baby. <laughs> Testament to uh, the struggles of research. Uh, conversation say, so, yeah. My big takeaway from the, the research and drinks develop department at driveline was research is hard. <laughs> it and takes a long time. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Research is yeah, hard. The and research is hard. Do. The drinks are easy. That should yeah, be so, our, that should be our uh, tagline. Research is hard. And that's why we drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But all kidding aside, like the Netherlands, for sure, I did a, a ton of work. I, I transitioned to being a hitting coach in the Netherlands, even though it was with lower level baseball, obviously, than professional baseball and did a ton of stuff with the constraints led approach and like Franz Bosch methodology, I guess, implemented yeah. both in the, in the weight room and um, in the cages, like all kinds of environmental. By, by the way, by the way, I don't even know anything about this. This is news to me as well. So, yeah, keep going. I don't know too much about the, the stuff you did in the Netherlands. Yeah, they're like super. So, are you, uh, Franz Bosch, I'm just for the listeners or whoever, um, all the the thousands, tens of thousands of listeners on here. Franz Bosch is a professor actually in the Netherlands, and his background is in track. And he basically teaches um, dynamic system theory, and and what that means is it's like constraints led approach is basically where you change the environment to elicit a behavior. And so, like as a hitting coach, like you put a string across the cage and say like don't hit the string, or you um, you know, put a T behind someone's hips and you're like, okay, to get them to load better, go back and touch the T instead of saying, put your hips back, like some kind of internal cue to make them think about their body. So you're, that's a very simplistic way to say, like you're changing the environment and you're cueing them to the environment and you're not cueing their body or like, oh, do this with your hands. You're not doing that. You just give them a really heavy bat and then all of a sudden their mechanics change. So that's that's a constraints led approach, and I would say the Netherlands on a scale of one to ten of like what their methodology is like, a, they are a ten constraints led approach. So like mm. everything they do is is from that per, lens and perspective. So that was really uh, something really different, but also to the magnitude that they did it, it was like something I definitely had never seen. Uh, so it was like my basically introduction to being in the cages. Do you uh, remember came, re- really, really quickly? Not, not, not good job, but I'm really curious about this. Do you remember the kind of range of weights they used for the bats? Like, what was the what was the lightest? What was the heaviest? I don't remember. It's a good, actually, it's a good question. Because I'm curious how it compares with, to our training as well. I know uh, I was working with softball and baseball, but also yeah. I will say like the the there's there's pros and cons to everything. The thing about the Netherlands is that they they're ahead in some ways, but also their budget and abilities are they don't have the stuff. So they didn't have axe yeah. bats, you know, like they just like made random heavy bats and random penny bats. Like what'd you say? Like penny bats. Like, yeah, the they one, just the like, bat we just put a bunch of coins on. Yeah. They just, and their environmental constraints were just like, they'd put a block underneath someone's foot for like underneath someone's front foot or, you know, like they, it was, uh, I wouldn't say it was like as measured, you know, as what I was used to. Um, it was just more conceptual and not as like precise, I guess. So driveline, I mean, what lessons did I learn at driveline? So many, <laughs> so many, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I, I was a unique spot there where I just like was in the R and D department, but didn't have an R and D background really. And I just learned a Same ton from you guys. Same with all of us. <laughs> yeah. You just described the R and D part department really well. Yeah, but now, but now you guys have an R&D background, but I just like, you know, no coding skills. No, I came, to, I think I came to Lindley like every other day and I was like, Lindley, we should do this. And he's like, that would take me months of work to do. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I was constantly the, uh, the like killer to all your ideas. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I felt really bad about it at the beginning, but at the end I was like, yeah, this is like the 20th idea that I've had to be like, ah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't know about that. Um, just for yeah. like logistical reasons. I have a qu- quick question about like you, you said that, um, like talked about how baseball has grown as far as technology goes and their implementation of that has you, and you're, you've been like interested in that. It was your interest in, um, like quantification of, of training and like using objective uh, data collection methods and all of the technology was that interest, did you have that interest before you started with the Cardinals or has your interest in that kind of grown like with baseball? I mean, to give you an idea of like 2012, Rachel Blokovic, I, uh, I, my first year with the Cardinals, 2012, I was in the Yo, I'm dugout trying to see with 09. like, <laughs> okay. So my, Sorry. I was in the dugout and I like, <laughs> I, okay. All right. Let me start over. I, uh, got to Johnson city, which was the rookie league affiliate. And we were doing a ton of conditioning with position players. And I was like, these guys are playing every day. And they were bitching to me about conditioning. And I was like, yeah, I don't blame you because they're just all, all exhausted. So like our center fielders running conditioning before the game. 
And so I just basically took it upon myself and I had these spreadsheets and I went out and measured the field in Johnson city, like certain distances that were like common routes, like to go catch a fly ball in between left fielder and center field. So I like took a tape measure with the athletic trainer, measured all these routes to get like common distances. And then I started tracking what they're running in game. So I would just like watch where they run and then I would count their steps back to their position. And then I would write that down. I also had two stopwatches going for the pitchers. So I would, I would track their time in between innings. I would track their time between pitches. I would track how long their outing was. I was tracking like probably eight to 10 variables, you know, between pitchers and position players just with a spreadsheet and stopwatches and, you know, pencil. And uh, I was getting guys heart rates as they were coming out of the game pitchers. Of course, if they didn't get pulled out after they got shelled, but like I was getting their heart rates after they came out of the game. So I just, you know, I think I've always just like wanted to know the truth. You know, I wanted to be precise about what I was doing. And so I started tracking all of this. Well, little did I know that was 2012 and catapult had started over in Australia, like six years before that I was way behind. Yeah. <laughs> I was, but then I think like literally the next year, like catapult kind of hit the U S and I was like, Oh shit. Like everything I was doing actually has already been done and turned into a technology that could do it really simply. Yeah, but it made um, yeah, it easier just, for uh, for you to apply that type of stuff, though, right? Just yeah, kind of, even, like even just going through it, lines. I think. Yeah, I was saying even just going through it and thinking of it, thinking of it like abstractly, like you did initially, and then actually applying it. Yeah, I, I like think speaks I mean, to like to just getting yeah. familiar with the system even before, even before tech comes out, because I think that people do struggle with that. They use a tech and they don't really know what they're doing. They just like slap it on and they have no idea what they're measuring. They're just like collecting the data and then yeah. it's kind of yeah. like sitting on it. Yeah, I mean, we ended up basically doing no position player conditioning by the end of the year, just because I was like, "This is you're already doing so much." So, um, and then the guys who aren't doing a lot don't need to run more. Like the catcher, just because he's not running, doesn't need to run. So, um, anyway, so that was just simple stuff. But yeah, I've always been curious in that way. I've always I've taken to technology really quickly. I, I don't know. I just never like had a a problem with it the same way that some people do in in baseball or just you know in general in general in every sport in every industry this is happening the tech is coming and some people really take to it and and want the numbers to learn from it and some people just don't yeah right. and, and, and i think just from noticing working with you at driveline and getting to know you and stuff like i know like kind of like lindley mentioned you're like a big idea thinking thinker and sometimes like some of them you know work out some of them don't uh but like i guess without mentioning like any ones that you're still that you're still working on now are there any projects that you kind of left behind at driveline that you think you, like if you'd had more time or a little bit more resources that you really really would have uh liked finishing <laughs> i all mean yeah the, literally all of them the, the two that i started you know the two that i started i guess that um, not I started, but just the two that I was working on, I should say is, is just like the gaze tracking stuff and, uh, the moon landing project, if you will, of getting the, the major league hitters. We want, we wanted to get major league hitters in and had a couple signed up and major to face a major league pitcher who was going to throw like 60 at bats in a few days. So, um, I don't know why Kyle Lindley won't make eye contact with the computer right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I'm hiding this out of my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And, and, uh, and that can be something if Lindley's comfortable with that we can talk about on the podcast. Uh, uh, may, yeah. Maybe and then, and then you know what? It's just like the moon. It's just like the moon landing race back back in the day. But now there's a paper out, and somebody beat us to the moon. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. But there's still room that, on the moon, though. There's still, there's but they're still going to Mars. I think the moon was that was live pitching, live hitting. Going to Mars would be like majorly hitters, majorly pitchers because that still hasn't been done. So there's still time, boys. Uh, but also another one that we kind of started, which I'm sure actually the data is somewhere around. It's laying around oh, there somewhere. Oh, we got the data. We got the data. <laughs> we got the data. We have, we have plenty uh, of data. I don't know if you've heard about uh, Track, Driveline's, you know. Career, um, <laughs> powered by Driveline Edge. Software, powered by yeah. uh, Driveline Edge. <laughs> yeah. Analytics Shameless plug. Shameless plug. If you have plug. any questions, uh, you know, check out Driveline Baseball's Track, all you listeners out there. So, so anyway, the other one that, uh, was started was just the, um, the body track study with looking at how pitchers are placing force as they're on their back leg and then how that like affects everything up the chain. That's something I've wanted to do honestly since 2012. And since 
my early days in professional baseball that I wanted to do um, just because I think that basically a pitcher's ability to sit into his back leg, to, ability to hinge, abil- ability to hold that position um, affects everything up to, up to the moment of ball release. So that's something that was started and the data's, the data's are somewhere in track and maybe it'll get picked up. Maybe it won't. It's probably in the parking lot somewhere, but it's still, it's still uh, uh, ethically approved yesterday. Cleared out the parking lot yesterday. Did you did you delete it? Did you delete the datas? <laughs> God no. Hey, hey, we'll welcome you back with open arms if you want to come uh, come complete the moon landing study and the body track study. Yeah, body think, track hey, specialist. I mean, that one's still there. That one's still there. But also, we're gonna. I mean, we're gonna have force plates everywhere, so that yeah, make it a little easier. True. For for that at least. I, I, I wasn't sure if you're gonna bring up uh, softball either. I was curious if you had any. Just kind of like like stuff. I mean, oh, man. obviously, Softball. obviously, you're in a position. Obviously, you're in a position in baseball right now. But how how do you see how do you see like softball softball tech feature going forward over the next couple of years? And like, what kind of opportunities for it's certain coaches take, or people? It's going to take someone to care about it and somebody who knows what to do. You know, so it's like I don't. And it's not a. It's obviously not a dig towards driveline. But like you guys are busy. You know, like you need somebody who like I, when I was there, it's like I wanted so badly for that to go off because I care about it. Like I care about the sport. I didn't grow up watching baseball. I grew up watching softball, you know, so I care about the sport. I care about improving and I see what's going on in the sport and it's not a lot. So it's, and, and then, and they know it, you know, people in the sport are like, we don't know what to do. Um, and they're getting better. I think there's a, I just attended a, a pitching conference and they were talking a bit about some of like this stuff into softball as well. So I think it's making a, a little bit of progress, but yeah, no, for sure. Like there are people doing some awesome things and I, I mean, you guys know them, but um, it's just behind. It's just really far behind. So it's going to take somebody who really who cares about the sport, but also has the mind for data and also wants to do, you know, the work. And you've got people like Carlton Salters out there who is yep. doing the work, but he's doing it in his own little bubble. And there's no professional league where we're getting a bunch of data that we can go, oh, this is the right way. So it's they're just all in their own little bubbles doing good stuff. And so it's going to take an engine like driveline, in my opinion, and I don't even know who else out there could do it, but like driveline to apply those things to softball. And you need, you know, you need both worlds to apply, uh, collide where someone in the softball realm has to want to do it and driveline has to be available and they have to come together like this. So, yeah. So I don't know, obviously I want, I want to help the sport just cause that's, I like, in some ways, owe my career in sports to being able to play that sport at a high level. And I kind of, I don't take offense to it by any means, but people are like, Oh, so who was your favorite team growing up? And they're talking about baseball. And I'm like, I didn't play baseball. I played softball. So who was your favorite team? What do you, Texas softball is who I was like obsessed with, you know, cause obviously there's, I, I, I I was definitely aware of team USA softball, like, uh, because they were in the Olympics, like as I was kind of, in my formative years of, of like playing sports, I knew like, okay, Jessica Mendoza, but like Texas softball was my favorite team and they were always really good when I was growing up. So that was my, my jam. What do you, what do you think is the lowest hanging fruit in softball right now? Like it could be as general as like just pitching, just hitting or like something specific. Like, yeah. I don't even, I don't really even like know all the intricacies or things that could be affected. <laughs> From the perspective of what is already available, like what information is already available, hitting, hitting just because it's like, it's the same. It's the same. It's not the same thing. Hitting is not the same thing. The swing is the same thing. Like there are right. really giant principles that are exactly the same that you would not have to change. Are you saying hitting is closer? Hitting is closer to like softball pitching is MLB pitching. You're kind of you're essentially uh, talking about. Wait, so ask that, ask that again. No, I was saying like, like in the sense that like the swing in, in softball and the swing in baseball is like a much more similar comp than like the pitching motion. Or yeah, you'd have to start things. from yeah. damn near nothing yeah. with pitching in softball. But just because the lowest hanging fruit for me is just like just transfer like the information we have about the swing to softball, you know, hit hitting from hitting is different because pitch movement is different, obviously, like arm slot is the physics. it's not it's not even an arm slot windmill versus baseball pitching is completely different yeah so the vision piece is different and i've actually started hitting myself off of a pitcher 
And just because like, I, you know, I was, I played softball. So I want to get a sense for like, what does it feel like when a slider's coming at you? What does it feel like with like, what does that look like? Um, so it's just, it is radically different to like, not radically, but it's very different to hit from over the top than it is a windmill pitch. So the concept of hitting is different, but the swing is the same. So lowest hanging fruit, I would say for sure, is to get at least swing mechanics and information out there. Okay, yeah, that that's what I was going to ask. I wasn't sure if you meant like uh, hitting in terms of like mechanics or the movements or like from an approach perspective. Because that's, that's one thing I've always like, uh, I, I don't know if like approach wise, the occasional, I guess, like slap hitter or, or like the smaller, you know, ball approach or... Uh, I mean, the one, uh, the, the speaker from NC state at slugfest, yeah. you know, the like home run mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I was like, I mean, this just seems like so easy in softball to just like no slap hitters and just like hit bombs. But I don't know if that's like, maybe there is a ton of value to the like, slap hitting small ball approach, or it's in the same state as the, like, you know, sack bunt crowd and West coast baseball you know, a few years ago. I mean, even, even just like the last few years, you know, West coast baseball teams are still like bunting like crazy, but do you, so do you think it's more of like a mechanics is the lowest hanging fruit or like even like a hitting approach in softball? Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a really good point from that perspective too, I think is the approach. I, I mean, no matter what, no matter what you say about her presentation, like she's proven it in numbers. Yeah. Swift, uh, it's Jennifer Patrick Swift, the head coach at NC State. Um, just that, like, basically, it's kind of been a misnomer almost that softball players have to, or it's valuable to have a short game. Where she's like, yeah, no, <laughs> it's just not, you know. And so, and that's that's tons of things that are that are coming about where we're like, yeah, actually, that's not as valuable as we thought, or at least hitting home runs is more valuable. And also, they're they're not even trying, you know. And also softball athletes are getting a lot just just like anything uh the sport's growing and there's a higher caliber athlete they're just bigger girls playing the game and so you can find more girls that are able to actually hit the ball out of the park so i mean i think you're right in that area too where you definitely could uh, apply the approach Um, but also that goes back to like mechanics and if like being able like what how can you hit a ball hard you know how can you develop that skill yep and then, and then go, Oh, I can hit the ball hard and I can, I can hit home runs. Okay. I don't need to slap all the time. I can do, I can hit for power. So, um, but yeah, like mechanics, definitely approach that probably would be harder. Cause that's just literally coach's opinion. Right. Um, until we get some serious statistics on like, what's actually more valuable. Is it trying to actually hit or is it, you know, is it uh slap, slap bunning, yeah. bunning, I don't know. Is there, That's a good question. Is there anything like that out there? And I guess it's almost more a question for myself, but like linear weights, kind of like WOBA exists for baseball. Are there like generally accepted linear weights for different counts and everything and softball? Mm, uh, not to my knowledge, but I wouldn't say that I'm like the expert yeah. on that by any means. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, that's a, that'll definitely get me past, uh, or that'll definitely help me pull away from Lindley on our Twitter game. If I put out some, <laughs> oh, some wow, softball dude, WOBA yeah. values. Yeah, Lin- oh, Lindley, you're dead, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, boost. Uh, well, Lindley and I are in a race to 1,500 Twitter followers. Still, um, you guys, to 1,500? That is such a <laughs> burn. Oh, my God. The <laughs> looking at two rookies here. I mean, I, I was just trying to, I was just trying to like take my time, get Lindley, get Lindley to catch up to me. I'm not doing this anything right so now, Lindley. False. This and, is and, so and false. Every time Karen <laughs> says this, that. this is the reason why I'm catching up is just, uh, is just anyways, changing the subject. You said, uh, you, you mentioned a couple of times, like you're very active in the weight room and CrossFit and everything. Um, and you were a strength conditioning coach. And then it, you like, also just mentioned that you're taking it bats against some, some baseball pitching and everything. So I like, I really respect how it seems like you're delving into what you're teaching and kind of, um, in a way, uh, leading by doing basically. Um, is that something that's a big part of your like coaching experience? Is that something that you've always, you've adopted really early on? Is that like a big, a big part of your, um, your job or the way that you, you approach your job, or is that just yeah. like, it's, those are just things you like to do. So it just happens no. to be that. And, and, and before you answer, I, I thought Linda was going to ask you what your max exit velocity is. Cause that's what I wanted to know. So, so <laughs> tack that know. on answer Lindley's question. And let's see, let's hear some maxi V swings. 
I don't know yet, but I, I don't know. I bought, I bought two blast motion sensors for myself, but I haven't, uh, I haven't put it on my own at bats. I've been using it with a couple of guys I'm working with, um, just like college and whatever guys are up here, but I bought blast sensors. So I'll let you know my bat speed. Okay. Well, just use, just use caravan's tool and he'll give you a predicted uh, exit velocity and launch angle. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that that's like, it's just always been a huge part of who I am. I, I if I have one regret, it's that I didn't do more of that driveline, but I also was like, I was doing R and D stuff and I would, tr- you know, I was trying to do a bit of everything. And so I would like pop into yep. hitting sessions, but it was inconsistent. And I should have just like, I, I wish I, if that, I wish I would have jumped in more. Um, you still did some of that. I remember doing some, some throwing workouts with you in the morning um, and getting yeah. to know the plow drills and the, in the throwing program a little bit. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, it's, it's a huge part of just like for as long as I can, like I'm 33, I'm your old mom. And, <laughs> and uh, yep, exactly. I'm 33. And it's just like, as long as I can, I still want to feel what it's like to be an athlete. I still want to feel like what it's like to experience what they're experiencing exactly. And so for when I was a strength coach, I was training, you know, it was, it was, I would condition with the guys or I would lift and um, it's something that I like to do, but still, like I, I think of it as almost continuing education. So I'm starting to swing a bat again for the first time in a decade, you know, since I played consistently. And I'm feeling what it feels like to be a little sore in different areas. And I'm feeling what it feels like to have, like, I someone throw through mixed BP to me the other day, and I'm like learning what a curveball feels like, you know, just like, what does that look like? How hard is that to recognize? Um, so yeah, I think it's important to dive in in that way. I know that not everyone feels that way, but that's just something that I want to do, but also I'm a girl. So I feel like there's also some like needing to be able to step in at any moment and be like, Hey, this is what it should look like. Or, you know, I get challenged to something and I have to be able to do it. And like batting, you guys saw me struggle with batting practice and that was a huge, humongous hurdle. And I showed up to spring training. I was doing pretty well at driveline. And then I showed up to spring training. And it was a lot of pressure and I totally fucking crumbled. But it's like, I don't, you know what? I just like, uh, with in, in that kind of way, I'd rather try to do the hardest thing and fail, you know? So it's like, I totally got yipped up in spring training. It was really difficult. But now I'm like, I feel really good. I got some help. With, I got some help from Sam. I got some help from... I sent a video or two to Trevor, sent a video or two to, to, uh, Carpenter, like just trying to get advice. So I got some help. I got some help and I'm doing a lot better with it, but I'm proud of myself just for like, just for trying to do that, to try mm-hmm. to throw. Cause there's, there's even professional baseball coaches that don't throw batting practice, but I'm a girl. Yep. So I, I got to do it. Number one, but also I just want to, I just feel like it's the right thing to do as a coach to try to immerse yourself and be able to do those things. At some point when I'm 55 and I've got three kids or whatever, maybe I won't do that anymore. But for as long as I can, I want to like immerse myself in how that feels and, and just get as much like tactical information that I can get. Yeah. Just for, I think even going beyond like the actual, like, you know, feeling the movement or like understanding uh, what it's like to swing or be in there kind of a thing. I think it's also just like understanding failure at a task. Kind of. Totally. Like, and I think that's like what we get away from in R and D specifically, even at driveline, just a ton. Like even our skill coaches can get like too far away of that because like we have very successful results. Athletes come in and they do well. Like we have a very successful formula where where we do that. And that is like hands down still my favorite reason beyond just like liking baseball and playing, why I want to like keep playing for the studs as long as I can to just yeah. understand failure, you know, outside of analytics, you know, um, you know, all the quantitative stuff that we do where we're trying to like, you know, maximize and, 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 and be successful. Um, but, but just like being in like an uncertain environment, doing a task, that's really hard. And then like failing, I think understanding like that with an athlete and then, you know, factoring that into like the way you communicate things to them, it's just like so huge. And I think it's a, it's a trap that we fall into a drive on like every now and then. Cause we're like so removed sometimes from just like losing. You, know? you forget really fat. You know, yeah. it, th- I think that's such a good point. Brady is just like, 
Honestly, I so so t- tiny bit of background is like my career in softball actually ended from the yips. And so I like just completely lost it. I've never seen anyone have a worst case of the yips in the entire world. And uh, I ended my career like not being able to throw a ball. And that was like 10, 12 years ago or whatever. And then basically, as soon as I found out, I was like even had an ounce of like possibility of being a hitting coach. My first like thought was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to throw a batting practice, you know, like and and just the fear, the embarrassment, the shame that comes with like the yips and failing and whatever. And like I worked on a driveline, got to a good spot, felt like I could throw, went to spring training, did not happen. <laughs> like this was was not good. I was throwing swing and miss cutters and I didn't mean to, it was really bad. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) so I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to strike you out in batting practice. So anyway, uh, like that, just, just the feeling of failure, like you said, is just so vital and like embarrassment that goes with that. And like, just, you know, how does it feel when you give up a home run for the studs? Like not very good. I don't know if you know that because I'm sure you just strike everyone out, but (laughs) (laughs) But, I've given up uh, a couple. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but it's like how does that feel like just the just the emotional feeling tied to that it's not about there's definitely some some physical gain that you get as a coach of doing that but the emotional process you go through of sucking at something you know and I'm, I'm i'm hitting now and i'm just like when i first start when i first started taking some swings i just was like like i was taking video of myself and i'm like i think i'm doing one thing I'm doing a totally different thing. And it just reminds you of what it's like when you're coaching someone and you're like, Oh yeah, just do this. And they can't, it's like, isn't clicking. So there's so many valuable aspects to it. Obviously the physical portion, but just like you just mentioned is just the emotional, the mental things are just huge being coached by someone. I think you know how many people in the past year have coached me on batting practice. Probably I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. I would guess 100 and, and that is, but it's a good reminder of like, all these guys are getting so many coaches going, have yeah. you tried this? Have yeah. you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? And you're just like, it's a good reminder. I'm like, oh my God, when I, when I approach somebody, I should assume, especially in professional baseball, because everyone wants to coach these guys. I should assume that 50 people have given them advice. Got a lot yeah. of, a lot of voices, a lot of voices. And, uh, on. and I think that's, yeah, I mean it's it's something that's like so easy to just like slip into. And I also think that the athletes are usually really good at like sniffing that out. If you're just like, if you don't understand going through the failure, motions, it's pretty easy as an athlete to be like, okay, I mean, this person, this person just like doesn't understand this. You know, like if you come in really hot and you're like, all you have to do is this, you know, like this is like the classic, like coach dads on Twitter who like comment on things with like mechanics and stuff. It's like, Oh, all you need to do is this kid. It's like, obviously this person, clearly doesn't understand it. It's not yeah. that easy. You know, I'm trying to do this thing. Uh, and, and it's just like a huge whiff, I think, for players that can really, really easily, like, sniff that out. And and that's yeah. why I keep sucking at uh, throwing. That's the only reason I'm doing it, just to be able to to relate to the <laughs> feeling of uh, failure. Rachel, I also wanted to ask you how much of that is, like, how much of that is personal gain for you and like understanding well, what kind of environment they're in, but also a culture building thing at Slugfest, your whole presentation was about building a culture with uh, one of your previous positions. And it was like one of the best presentations I think I've ever seen. And I just, I, like, I know that's uh, like, pa- that's like a passion for you. So I was just wondering how much of like, um, how much of that is for your personal knowledge and, and like understanding of what the players are going through, but also like just building a culture of like togetherness as like a unit and uh, get like your players to like, whether it's buy-in or, or whatever. Yeah. I just sent a, so, I mean, I sent a video to a bunch of our line players of like, cause you know, I was there for five or six weeks and then we all got sent home. So like, I'm trying to develop relationships through text and like Instagram, you know, like, I mean, some, uh, one of our players tagged me on Instagram the other day for a challenge and I like had to do it. Cause I was like, I gotta, I gotta keep developing the relationship with this guy. And it's not, in, it's not inauthentic. I truly want to like, be responsive where they are, you know, where they're on, they want to communicate through Instagram and Snapchat and text. And, you know, I'm not going to learn how to play Fortnite. I'm not going to go that far, but like, it's like, I I just have to go to them. They're never going to like, sometimes I FaceTime them on purpose just to like make them feel awkward. But, but most time I just text with them, you know, 
But I sent I sent a video of one of my swings to a bunch of the Latin players, and they just ripped me to pieces. <laughs> they were like, they were like, "Oh, where's your hip load, Rachel? Where's your, you know, where's your swing decisions? That that ball was high." Like they're just talking shit to me. One of the guys was like, "This is all in Spanish," but he was like, he was like, "Fucking swing at strikes." <laughs> 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 And I just let them roast me and it's, but it's like, at least they see me trying. And that was the same thing. It's like one of the most enriching experiences in the way that I developed relationships early, early in my career, when I was a 24 year old girl trying to gain the respect of these of Latin players in 2012, I learned Spanish and I talked like an idiot for so long. I just, I just would I would write everything down. I would never use a translator. I would try to write everything down and I would talk horribly and they, it gave them an opportunity to see me being vulnerable and also gave them opportunity to coach me. Yeah. And so it developed this like symbiotic relationship where I was helping them with their English. They're helping me with my Spanish. They felt like they could correct me and coach me and they could kind of almost, I don't want to say talk back, but they could say, Hey, you're, they just got an opportunity to, to correct me, which yeah. is something that we take for granted that athletes never get to do. So I think it's a huge point of developing a relationship that they know that I'm just like trying it's not a one way street. Know. Yeah. So I'm not telling them to do all this and then I'm not doing it myself. And again, I, at some point, not every, you know, Brent Strom doesn't throw bullpens, but, but he did do it. And he, he probably could actually spin off a pretty nasty curveball if you asked him to, like, he just, there's, there's a level of respect. And again, just as a woman, I feel like it's ultra necessary for me to just show that I'm investing the time, um, and maybe they don't even know that I can swing a bat in the first place because some of these Latin players don't even know what softball is. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, softball. What's that? That doesn't exist in their country. So it's it's an interesting dynamic. Nice. Do you have a you have to go? You have a somewhere to be uh, in a couple yeah, minutes. I can stay on for a couple minutes yeah. more. Yeah. Lin- Lindley, hit the hit the, the fun questions. Oh, yeah. We have a we have a couple uh, questions lined up for you. Oh, but, but uh, let me let me let me uh, let me answer the let me ask the first one because okay. last time we asked Dan, we, we just interviewed Dan and we asked him what his favorite and least favorite part of working with me was. So since you <laughs> since you worked since you, you kind of mentioned on a couple projects you worked the closest with Lindley, what's your favorite and least favorite part of working closely with Lindley? I feel like this should be answered about all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, well, I, I, I'm I'm down. I brought it out. I, I just figured like, all right. yeah, yeah, my yeah. Go around the horn then. Working. My favorite part of working with Caravan was the fact that I knew I could always count on him to provide me with full lemon slices to eat. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if I have a, I don't know if a worst part. Oh, the worst part is in your, in the worst part is in the good to learn classes when you just be like, yeah. And then you do this and then you do this and then you do this and then you do this. And I'd be like, I don't, I, I'd have to re-listen to all of those classes so oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah. honest question honest question i don't know if he i don't know if he listened to the podcast or not but like so if you remember what, what's some feedback then for myself in new york uh, as, as teachers because we, we ran a good to learn we ran essentially myself and garrett york taught some beginner python to people that wanted to learn some and, and rachel i told you this but I, I thought you actually picked it up like pretty fast like picked up some parts of it pretty fast i just think you're used to like you know like throwing yourself into something and then getting result, like getting results or at least being able to kind of physically see the progression. So I think you got a little frustrated because like coding probably like a lot less, like not very linear, you know, like you can get something in the next part. I, I don't know. I, at least that was kind of my vibe. I thought you picked up stuff, but we're like yeah. frustrated at the lack of progress from like lesson to lesson kind of like just because you master stuff in lesson two. And less than three, we introduced like a whole new concept, like either a list or yeah, four loops. Probably but, like, yeah, probably. I don't know. You know, this is like, so now I'm doing some R stuff and it's like my fourth time trying to learn different coding yeah. languages. And I honestly, it's one of those things where this doesn't come as easily as other things for me. Um, and it's, it's also, it's, it's truly a language. So I think if anything, it would be just like actually having um, people do projects, you know, throughout the org i don't know if it's worth it though that's the the feedback yeah. is because some of the coaches even now are kind of like we have analysts for this and i'm like i know but it's just i just think it's valuable to understand the back end of things so you know when they're talking about like oh yeah i've got 400 lines of code just just that sentence alone people aren't like uh like yeah <laughs> yeah like that face that you just made brady like 
what does that mean? I have no idea. Um, my favorite part about working with Lindley. Oh my God. Well, there's so many. There's too many. Uh, honest, like, honestly, not, not all kidding aside, like just, I think working on a hard project, this is just a general concept, but working on a hard project with someone is always going to like, you know, like create camaraderie. And I just, it was just a blast to work on our project together with eye tracking and because it was so fucking hard and, and you take pride in some, you take, it's like, I personally, and I think obviously the culture at driveline is you take pride in doing something difficult. And even though we didn't even like truly finish, it's like, God, I got so much valuable information. And realistically, you know, I know that somebody else landed on the moon, but like likely still the amount of captures we did with that is more than anyone in the entire world is world has done. And so even if we didn't like fully complete the project, I think both of us learned a shit ton of, you know, information from that process. So it's like, it's another like just kind of life lesson of like, do you really need to go to the finish line? Like you got what you came for and we learned a lot and I'm sure you got, and then you could take that and apply it hopefully to a project in the future in that same area and, and, you know, go to full completion. But um, yeah, it was, that was probably my favorite part. The worst part was, <laughs> oh, let's go. Uh, God, no, just the. I think the worst part is that you were a dream killer. Probably that's that's probably the worst part. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, for sure. D- Lindley was like the. I was like the golden retriever puppy, and Lindley was like the like Eeyore. He come was. Here, I was here. like. <laughs> I was like, we could do this. We could do this. We could do this. And he was like, that's never gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, and then Brady, uh, God, my favorite part about Brady, you know, I just, but I, I think that a general, this is a general thing about Brady is like, I'm just so impressed by his purity of like, he really loves to do the job because, because he wants to make the sport better. He wants to give the information, you know, power to the people. Like he wants to like, make sure everyone knows this. And even though I offered him a $6 million contract to work for me, in 10 years he said no but i'm gonna keep asking you brady uh so i think just like just being around that and and truthfully being just a, in general driveline but for sure with brady i just remember thinking like wow this guy really just wants to like make it better like it's not for him it's not for like the driveline to make money it's like to make the sport better to get information out you know just to to be purely a scientist and provide information to the people it's not so, for the Twitter followers like myself and Lindley. That's, that's all I'm in for. <laughs> the worst part about Brady was definitely his dancing skills. Okay. Oh, See, I was hoping you would lead oh, with my let's dancing go. skills. So now I'm okay. You know what? <laughs> I was going to say that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said, and thank you. But now, <laughs> is this from Unicorn Night? What? Or just is this from what Unicorn? Are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> just, just this when 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 Brady breaks, you know, busts out his moves. Um, actually, uh, honestly, oh. I I want I want to observe your because I I haven't had too strong of opinions, but I want to observe your dancing skills more and, and also. Uh, are you saying mine? Yeah. Oh, I mean, my okay. dancing skills are incredible, but you know that's that's a whole nother. Oh, we've seen him. We saw him during uh during assessments. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you guys saw. Him. <laughs> that was my favorite. My favorite, this is the, this is so counterintuitive. Anyone listening to podcasts does not understand this because everyone hated doing assessments when I got there and doing assessments was by far the best part of my day. It was fucking awesome. So fun. The energy. Wow. You, uh, you crushed that one. Do you have, do you have any more time? Uh, cause we got a couple yeah. more short ones. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Let, let's just rip through it. Let's, uh, Oh, this is what well, this one's kind of interesting. Cause you, you don't usually drink, but, uh, if you were to drink, what, do you have a favorite alcoholic beverage? <laughs> this is my this is my beer right here. <laughs> I'm saying in a, in a no, hypothetical scenario, no, no what, alcoholic <laughs> beverages are favorite. Alcoholic okay, all right. Beverages. When I was when I was your age, <laughs> when I was your age, I probably would drink just vodka. I would have just martinis or vodka on the rocks or vodka with a lemon. This was before I was eating lemon slices. So it's yeah. like not to be confused with eating lemon. It just was vodka with a lemon. So, by the way, have any of you guys had a espresso martini? I had that yesterday for the first time. It's hardcore, dude. Yeah, bro. It's just like, it, 
<laughs> never mind. Never mind. Uh, next question. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Two, two kind of weird questions. Th th these were, these were initially designed for, you know, relatable stuff, uh, like during people working remotely, but I think they're pretty, I mean, obviously still pretty relevant, but w what's your favorite thing to do in long zoom meetings? <laughs> like zoom meetings that drag on. Rachel is a saint and she pays attention yeah. to everything. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I was <laughs> thinking that while I was asking the question. Uh, the wrong I truly <laughs> don't. I mean, honest, uh, gosh, that's a tough question. Cause like, like say, say you're in a zoom meeting, you know, don't have to name names or have to name organizations, but on uh, like one that's going too yeah. long. You, you, you want to multitask. Yeah. What are you doing right now while you're doing this podcast? I know you're doing something else. <laughs> no, I'm really not. I don't, no, okay. you know, I'm kidding. I, you know, I'm really fortunate. Like this is probably the closest I've been to just really like, I really enjoy truly seeing all of our staff members and like getting on for hitting, hitting department meetings. And I learn a ton. Like, I mean, I just, I honestly feel really fortunate. I, I learn a ton all the time. And I actually think like I'm like friends with our staff, you know, which is, yeah. I hate to say it's one of the first times in pro ball, but just it's, you know, it's hashtag pro ball, but, but uh, <laughs> I just, I just get along. They're really forward thinking. There's they're pushing me. They're doing projects. They're just like they're hard working guys. And I just really enjoy it. So um you guys, I never get distracted during Zoom meetings. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Nice. nice. All right. And then uh th this also is kind of a weird question, but I, I think I feel like you're you're gonna have a good answer. Oh, what's God. your what's your worst what's your worst roommate uh story or experience they they can they can talk about on air? <laughs> i've had a lot of roommates that's what i'm saying i figured i figured you'd have some, <laughs> that's some what i'm saying <laughs> that's what i'm saying i want i want a, i want a top five i want a bottom five now <laughs> no i've had i've had amazing i'm trying to think of like a bad roommate experience i the literally the first thing that popped into mind was an, a hostel does that count oh yeah, yeah sure caravan loves hostels oh yeah, yeah. I, was I was probably in, in there i was probably the roommate in this story <laughs> I was in a hostel in uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, if you will, Australia. And um, I just got, I was in a room with like these four girls who were from all over the world and uh, they were just like partying all night and stuff. And, and it was a pretty, I like basically slept with my suitcase, like on my chest like this, <laughs> <laughs> and just like, didn't sleep for the entire time that I was there. That's probably the worst roommate experience I've ever had, but I've, I've been pretty, I've, for all of the roommates that I've had, I've had a really good room. I've, I have really good, like travel juju, you know, it's yeah. like really good. You know, the juju. One of my, my worst roommate experience was actually the night before your Today. talk at Slugfest. Oh no, 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 no. This is not Oddly the time, enough. Anthony. Oddly this is enough. not the time. <laughs> now that what I happened? think about it, yeah. Oddly <laughs> enough, my worst roommate experience was at a Slugfest. Did this this when Lindley Oreos? tried to snuggle you? This when Lindley tried to snuggle you? Yeah. Did this involve Oreos? Wait, Lindley no. tried to snuggle you? No, this involved Lindley trying to do the old, you know, roll over <laughs> arm around. Did the same me thing you did to me. In the middle of the night. Yeah, but Caravan liked it. If I was sleep. Caravan, you would have let it happen, Anthony. What the hell? Well, I mean, that's <laughs> but that's why I had a problem with it because Caravan <laughs> was back home. You know, you didn't feel comfortable about snuggling another man at the time. Now we live in separate rooms, so maybe we can, you know, next slugfest <laughs> we can revisit that. But I was asleep. I swear, I was asleep. That was not a conscious effort. <laughs> You guys, I didn't even know this went down. You guys kept it a secret pretty well. You don't, you didn't want to mess me up before my see, talk. Is that you didn't what? see the tension between us the next I was day about to say. during your talk? No, you covered it really well. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> nice. about it. It was a whole thing. Do, do, do you have a favorite? Uh, do you have a favorite like like cheat food or like fast food? Uh, something you wouldn't usually eat. Besides the, your daily pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um. God, I don't know, guys. That's a really tough, that's a hard question. I mean, I, I like uh, I like ice Save cream. the hardest questions for last. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I like you didn't even ask me the questions you said you were gonna ask me. You're fraud. You 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 were gonna ask fraud, me fraud dropping the f bomb. Yes. What? <laughs> what question did I say? What question did I say? I was I was gonna ask you that. I didn't.